Sometimes life can get real crazy and make you believe that you're losing your way. Whenever you feel like this, I want you to look in the mirror and say, I know that I can make it. I'm a child of God, no need to fake it. If my confidence begins to fade, I'll remind myself I'm fearfully made. He's got a plan for me and that's a fact. So I'm gonna keep on pushing, ain't no turning back. Wait, pray, slay all day, put it on repeat and say, no weapon formed against me's gonna prosper not to take. Wait, pray, slay all day, put it on repeat and say, no weapon formed against me's gonna prosper not to take. Today we're talking about when people use the phrase, I don't understand, after you've said no or set a boundary and you've made yourself perfectly clear. Why do we get frustrated and what can you do about it? That's what we're talking about today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find value here. Before we get into today's topic, I want to tell you about the awesome inspirational mug that I'm drinking out of. So today I'm having some peppermint tea out of the mug that says, if you believe you are who God says you are, you can achieve your biggest dreams. And uh, I'm drinking out of the pink mug. If you have <clears throat> any of our mugs, hoodies, t-shirts, any of my books, which one do you have and how has it benefited you? please let us know in the comments section. So let's dive in. Have you ever been in a situation where you have said no, you set a boundary, and you have made yourself perfectly clear, but the other person kept coming back with the phrase, I don't understand, I don't understand, and you know that you were perfectly clear. It could be that they wanted to borrow a significant amount of money. And maybe you've loaned the money in the past, they haven't paid you back, and you don't wanna take the risk because you have priorities that you have to take care of with your money. And they're saying to you, I don't understand why you can't lend me this $500. And you were very clear. Perhaps they want to borrow your car. And maybe you have let them borrow your car in the past, and they bring it back with no gas. Or they brought back the car and the car had all kind of junk in the car, like cups and papers and food and you keep your car clean. Or you just don't loan your car. That's just not something you do that is your personal uh, value. And you were very clear, you said no. And they kept coming back with, I don't understand why I can't use your car and you find yourself arguing to the point of nauseam. You find yourself arguing to the point where you are frustrated, where your blood pressure uh, is going up, where you are getting bent out of shape. And I want to clarify some things that I think are important, and then uh, we will, I will share some scriptures with you that will help cement these points. So here's the thing. A lot of people use the term, I don't understand, and the reality is they do understand. When we use the term, I don't understand, the word I don't understand means to comprehend, right? So when you have said no, and you both speak the same language, and you are speaking in a clear and loud enough voice so that they can hear you. You're not whispering, right? You both speak the same language and you are not using a uh, technical jargon. You're speaking in layman's terms. Then it is not a comprehension problem, even though the person is using the term, I don't understand. And what happens is because you are focused on the wording, I don't understand, you are going back and forth re-explaining over explaining and chronically defending a position that you don't need to defend because you made yourself clear the first time, but you're coming from the mental space of it being a problem of lack of comprehension. And it is not lack of comprehension. It is lack of acceptance. And that is the key. 
And so you need to frame it in your mind so that you don't drive yourself nuts when they give you pushback and you can remain firm and unwavering no matter how many ways they come at you with, I don't understand. So usually when a person says, I don't understand, when you say no, when you've set a boundary and you were perfectly clear, like there's, you're not speaking two different languages. You're not speaking Swahili while they're speaking French. You're both speaking the same language with simple layman's terms, no technical or advanced jargon. They don't need a thesaurus to talk to you. And you're speaking in a voice that is loud, loud enough for them to hear you and clear. You're not whispering like, no, they can hear you. It's not a comprehension issue, even though people will say, I don't understand. So what is really happening is one of three things. They are upset by your actions or decision. So if you can frame it that way, it gives you the clarity you need to not invest a whole lot of energy in over explaining yourself. So let's go back to the issue with the $500. So you have a cousin or friend who has borrowed money from you in the past on more than one occasion and they haven't paid you back. They still owe you money. And now they're coming to you for a bigger sum. So now they're coming to you asking for $500 and you have bills, you know, you have your whatever, you know, your bills, your rent, your mortgage, whatever you got going on. And you tell them, no, I can't loan it to you. And they say, well, you got a good job and you don't have kids or your kids are older. I don't understand why you can't lend me the $500. I want you to pause before you argue and re-explain and over-explain. Was there anything unclear when you said, no, you can't lend them the $500? Were you speaking in a different language, in a language that they don't speak? So there really was a comprehension program, uh, uh, problem because you were speaking in uh, French and they speak Cantonese. So there is a language barrier. Was there a language barrier? Were you whispering where they could not hear what you were saying because the volume was so low? Like, let's really pin this down technically. So then what that denotes is that the issue is not comprehension. The issue is acceptance. They are upset by your decision or your action because they want what they want and they can't get what they want. So they are using the term, I don't understand. I don't understand how we're family and you won't lend me $500. I don't understand how we've been friends since grade school and you won't lend me $500. I don't understand how you could know that my rent is due, but your rent is due also and you can't lend me this $500. I don't understand how you know that I need this for my business, this $500 to keep my business afloat, but you got a kid who needs braces, whatever the issue is. So no matter what they attach to the phrase, I don't understand, it is not an issue of comprehension. But if you treat it as such, you will find yourself frustrated because you are over explaining. Now, if you struggle with people pleasing, you're going to have a difficult time implementing what I'm talking about. So you know yourself. So frame it in your mind that they are upset by your actions or your decision, meaning your stance or no, or whatever the boundary is that you set. Right? So that's number one, put it in your mind, because that will help you to stop over explaining, because you now realize that the root of the issue is not miscommunication. The root of the issue is not lack of comprehension or a language barrier or you're speaking in such a low volume volume that they can't uh, hear you or you're speaking in technical advanced jargon that they don't understand your word choice. We're taking all of that off the table. This is going to help free people. Two, when some people use the phrase, I don't understand, and you've made it very clear when you set, say no, or you set a boundary. What they're actually saying is I have a different point of view about the issue. So again, it is not lack of comprehension that they don't understand the word no. No is clear. It is not lack of comprehension that they don't understand. No, you can't borrow $500 from me. 
because you haven't paid me back the other money that you've owed me previously. No, you can't borrow my car because the last two times that I lent you my car, you returned it on E. No, you can't uh, throw a party at my house because that's just not what I do. Whatever the thing is. So they have a different point of view about the issue. And so that's number two. So when they say, I don't understand because I'm your cousin and family is first no matter what. Now, that may truly be how they feel, right? Because they have a different point of view. That may be their belief system that family is first no matter what. But your belief system might be my priorities are first no matter what. And if I lend you this $500 knowing that my rent is due in one week, then I am potentially putting myself in a hole if you don't pay me back. And we have a track record where you haven't paid me back. So even though you're promising to pay me back this time, you have a track record where you haven't paid me back. And even if you mean well and you intend to pay me back, what if the person who you're relying on to come through financially uh, has an issue and doesn't come through? And now you're like, I don't have the money. Give me another month. But my rent is still due a week from today. So they may feel family first. That may really be their belief. But just because somebody has a clear value system doesn't mean you share the same value. So your value may be, yes, I love you as family, but my priorities and my bills have to be paid. That's what's important to me. We are two distinct souls. We don't have the same mind, which means we don't have the same values and we don't have the same priorities. And so if you can understand it from that point of view, it helps you not to become frustrated. It helps you keep your peace regardless of the pushback, regardless of what they say. So they may say, well, you so selfish. Sometimes you got to let people make you the villain of their story. If that's how you want to see me after what I've done for you in the past, so be it. How I talk to you about your so what game, we're going to do a whole video on the, the phrase, so be it. The power of so be it. So be it. All right. Let them handle it. But if you struggle with people pleasing and you confuse being gracious with allowing people to take advantage of you and being a doormat, you're going to have a problem. So sometimes people use the phrase, this is what I'm getting at, I don't understand, to really indicate that they have a different point of view about the issue, right? So they may feel like, well, you know, you're not using your car today. So there's no reason why I can't use your car. And that's really how they truly feel. But how you truly feel is the last time I lend you my car, I loaned you my car, you brought back my car filthy. What were you doing in there? Or my car was smelling like weed or, uh, you, you came back and the car was had no gas in it. So, no, even though I'm not using the car because you don't put the same care into my personal belongings that I do. I take care of the things that are mine because I work hard for my belongings. Now, you don't need to say all of this, but this is how you're framing it in your mind so that you're not letting them pull you down the rabbit hole of I don't understand when the issue is not lack of comprehension. The issue is you both have different values about the thing they're asking you about. You both have a different point of view and you are allowed to live by your values. You don't have to agree. It is your car, point blank period. Third, when people say, I don't understand, and this is connected to number two, they simply don't want to accept your choice because they want what they want in the moment. So again, when you say no clearly and the person keeps pushing back, well, I don't understand, you know, as long as you have known me, I don't understand because remember when we were in second grade and I shared my peanut butter and jelly sandwich with you, so I don't understand why you can't lend me $500 as if the peanut butter and jelly sandwich equates to $500. And you have both been, you know, you have both done things for one another. But there are certain things that you just stand by because it's your personal value system. And when a person lives by a different value system, they may feel like I don't want to accept your choice because I want to use your car. And so essentially what they're saying is that the thing that they want from you 
takes precedence over how you feel about it. Really tell yourself the truth. The more that we tell ourselves the truth without filters, even if it's hurtful, the more that we can clearly see the fruit of the issue so that we can make clear decisions and people don't pull on our emotions and drag us into a direction that we don't need to be dragged in. We don't need to be emotionally invested in things that have nothing to do with us after we've been very clear. And so sometimes it's simply that they don't want to accept your choice. But you have a right to stand by your decisions. So maybe, uh, let's say you're a parent. And when you come home from work, you don't want company because you are unwinding from work. You're cooking dinner. You're going over homework with the children. You have a lot on your plate. And you met a friend or you reconnected with an old friend and they live in the same, uh, the same community as you, right? Let's say they live, you know, in the same, the same neighborhood. They have a lot of free time on their hands and they come to your house and they'll pop up the minute you walk in the door. They'll see you pulling in and they, they want to come hang out. But you got stuff to do. You got dinner to cook. You got to prepare for the next day. You're going over homework. And let's say that they don't have as many responsibilities as you do. And so they believe because they like being around you that they should just be able to pop up at your house. And let's say you've been very clear and you were like, you know, I would like us to hang out every once in a while. But during the week when I'm coming home from work, you know, I have a schedule where I'm focusing on my kids, you know, whatever it is that you say, whatever wording that you use. And so uh, we can plan to hang out, you know, if you're free this weekend or next week, and we can make a plan to do that. But you just can't pop up on me because I have a routine and a schedule and things I need to do. If you choose to, you know, elaborate, right? You'll figure out the details of what you're going to say. So let's say you've been very clear. And despite the fact that you say that, the next day they come over the second you you get home and you're like, huh? I know I was clear. I know I didn't mince words. I was polite. I was uh, kind about it, but I was still very clear that I don't have that type of free time during the week because, you know, I'm unwinding from work. And even if you don't have kids, maybe you just want to unwind from work. Whatever your routine is, you really don't have to over explain yourself. And they come and they're like, well, you know, I could help the kids with the homework and uh, I won't be in the way. I can just watch TV while you're unwinding. And I don't see why that's the problem if we're supposed to be friends. And they may really feel that way. That may be their point of view. That may be their value system, but it's not yours. It's not your value system. And so what they're essentially saying after you've made it clear, especially if you elaborate a little bit to clarify so that there's no wiggle room to say they don't get it, they don't understand. At this point, when they come back, after you've made it clear, they're clearly showing you, I don't want to accept your choice. I'm disregarding your boundary. So you have a boundary issue, not a comprehension issue. This is not an issue of comprehension. It doesn't matter if they feel they don't understand. They're using that term, but really they're disregarding your boundary. They don't have to accept. They don't have to agree. This is a better word. So they don't agree with your choice and they don't want to accept your choice. So really what they're saying is I don't agree with the fact that when you come home, I can't come over. I feel that because I consider you a friend, I could just come over whenever I want because you would come to my house whenever you want. And that may be their value system. But as individuals, we have different value systems. And sometimes it might mean reevaluating a friendship and being like, we're not going to be the right friendship fit because I don't have the that, that you require and desire. So this is not going to work for me. So begin to really pinpoint when you find yourself being pulled down the rabbit hole, this is what I'm getting at, of I don't understand. Ask yourself one of these three questions. Is this an issue of 
they're upset by your action or your decision, meaning they're upset by the fact that you said no and you're sticking to your no, or they're upset by your actions, your boundary, that you're sticking to your boundary of no company during the week, whatever the issue is, but they're using the phrase, I don't understand. This will help you not get pulled down the rabbit hole of over explaining and having 99 conversations about the same thing. Two, ask yourself, is it an issue of that they have a different point of view? So they may believe because we're family, what's yours is mine. Even though you're the one that goes to work for the things that you purchase, you know, you use your hard earned money, but they may believe what's yours is theirs because you're related to one another, but you don't have that same belief. So it's not an issue of comprehension. It's an issue that you have a different point of view or a different value system. Or three, ask yourself the third question. Is it that they don't agree and they don't want to accept your choice? They're disregarding your boundary. And once you ask yourself these three questions, you will have the clarity that is necessary for you to not allow yourself to get pulled down the rabbit hole of their phrasing, I don't understand. So I hope that was helpful and I want to give you a scripture that'll cement the point. And it's Matthew 537. Matthew chapter 537 says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. Think about that. So the Bible is saying, let your yes be yes and your no be no, meaning give a clear yes or a clear no, but make up your mind, don't waver. And then it goes on to say, anything more than this comes from the evil one, because when you waver, right, when you waver, you become double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded individual is unstable in all their ways. And so the reason why sometimes we feel emotionally thrown off, we're not emotionally stable, when we waver and go back and forth is because we're being double-minded. We're not being true to our values. We're not protecting and respecting our boundaries. So we're double-minded. So really begin to ask yourself, you know, am I double-minded when a person gives me pushback on my no? When a person gives me pushback on my boundaries? Because the issue is not their pushback. People are going to push back. The issue is you standing and sticking by your boundary regardless of their pushback. And sometimes it means risking not being liked. Sometimes it means risking they're going to be mad at you. Okay, so be it. I guess you're mad today. So be it. I, I guess you're not going to be speaking to me for a while. Maybe you won't speak to me ever again. So be it. Because what you're not going to do is manipulate me. So if you choose not to speak to me because I'm not going to loan you the money, then I guess we're not speaking. That's on you. I'm good. The next scripture I want to give you comes from Proverbs 4, chapter 7. I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. I said it wrong. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. And it says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy wisdom, get thy understanding. So you already have an understanding. When you say no and a person gives you pushback, you understand that it's not a comprehension program uh, process. Right, it's not a, a comprehension, I keep saying process, it's not a comprehension problem. So it's not a problem of them not comprehending you. No, it's comprehensible. It is the one of those three things that I just laid out for you. And so use your wisdom. Wisdom also says, right, biblical wisdom, to let your yes be yes and your no be no. So don't go back and forth. Use the wisdom from the Bible and be cemented in that. So it says, Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. And it says, therefore, get wisdom. Where do we get wisdom? We get wisdom from the Bible. And then it says, with all thy getting, get thy understanding. So have a solid understanding. When you have a solid understanding of the dynamic that's happening, when a person is playing with you, in your face with the words, I don't understand, and you've been crystal clear, beyond crystal clear, get an understanding that the issue is not lack of comprehension. It is one of the three things. And sometimes a person is not trying to be manipulative. They just don't have the language. So when children, right, this would be an example, say, well, I don't understand why I can't, uh, I can't go to the party where there's no adult supervision. You know, I make good choices. So this is not an issue where your teenager is being manipulative. This is an issue where 
They're not developed enough in their thinking to think through all of the possible consequences that can happen with them being at a party with no adult supervision. And so that's a situation that may require some detailed explanation. Well, these are some of the things that can happen. You may have someone that comes in with a gun. You can have someone that comes to the party, brings drugs, spikes the, the juice, and, and now uh, you, you overdose it. I mean, there are so many things that can go wrong. A fight can break out uh, and, and you can go down the list. Think about it. So there are times where you need to add a bit more context, but you need to gauge and discern when you're being manipulated and when you're being pressured and when it is an issue where the person hasn't doesn't have enough information to really have an understanding. So when you're talking to your children, that's different, right? Because they aren't fully developed. They don't have the life experience. And so sometimes they will say, I don't understand. And they're not being manipulative. They just can't foresee all of the possible and potential risk and dangers. And you have more lived experience. So you may have to give them more of a breakdown so that they understand your reasoning and your rationale and that what you're doing is for their benefit to keep them safe. But outside of your children or, or, or minors, you know, it might be your niece, your nephew, whoever, when it's adult to adult and you have been crystal clear, then ask those three questions that I just gave you and allow those Bible verses to help you. Matthew 5, 37, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And Proverbs 4, verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting, get thy understanding. So I hope that was helpful for those of you that get tossed around when a person uses the phrase, I don't understand. I want to let you know about some awesome things we have coming up. So on Saturday, October 12th, 2024 live in New York City I have an in-person event for women it is called fix your crown sis we're going to have an amazing day together uh, tickets are going very fast so uh, if you would like to uh, come to that event the link is in the video description box to get your tickets and uh, when you click on the link it'll take you to the event bright page for those of you coming out of town uh, when you go on the FAQ section of the Eventbrite page, it'll tell you information about hotels, what to do in New York City if you're making a weekend of it, and so forth. So you'll see the link in the video description box. Also, are you a member of the YouTube channel? If you're not a member, you're missing out. We have four tiers of membership. There is the introductory member, the insiders club, wellness club, and the winner's circle. And each tier of membership has different uh, features, different perks. I would definitely encourage you to become a member of the wellness club at the wellness level because the, then you have access to our Wednesday wellness club, which is a therapeutic group that meets twice a month by telephone conference call. And we focus on mental well-being, mental fitness, emotional self-care through a biblical lens. You'll see a join button. If you don't see the join button near the video, you'll also see a link in the video description box to join. When you click on the link, you'll see that there are four tiers of membership. So read through the different tiers so that you can make the selection that meets with, uh, you know, what your needs are in this season of your life. So have a great day. Take care of yourselves and each other. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. No matter who you are, you will have haters. John 15 verse 18 says, If the world hates you, know that it hated Jesus first. So if you have haters, know that God is greater than your haters. Lately you've been feeling, feeling the way of your haters coming at you with their envy and their hate, scheming against you. Throwing mud on your name But God's gonna work it out Despite their lies and gay